Well, Greg is getting ready for the start of the race. 30 years, 30th year anniversary, you were explaining to me earlier. 1987, first official race, yep. um, 30 years later. What, is, what have you seen as the growth of this, this particular race? Well, in the early days, of course, it was a much smaller group of riders because it was almost an experimental thing for the uh, organizers of the uh, May 24th celebrations. And uh, it took a lot of hard work uh, to actually get it to be recognized as a legitimate race as opposed to just coming down from, um, from Somerset. And, and that is one of the reasons, just one of the reasons why, of course, it's named as the Sinclair Packwood Memorial Road Race because Sinclair Packwood, of course, was very, very instrumental in working with the authorities and getting this made to a legitimate race but it is it is tra changed immensely I mean the numbers of riders um, the level of the riding now across the board the strength in depth it's just a it's just an it's another world and uh, I think uh, this this year uh, again we will see an extremely uh, exciting race very very fast um, everybody's, um, I was talking to you about it earlier, everybody's saying Caden Hopkins, Matthew Oliveira, everybody's racing for third. Not on this day, not on this day. Uh, they've been dominating local racing this year, we know that. But May 24th, uh, the Sinclair Packwood Memorial Race is a whole different world. And um, I, I think that there's a good chance that we'll see somebody spring a surprise uh, this year when it gets down to Cedar Avenue. This, ra this race here is a bit more challenging. Obviously, we've noted headwind is going to play a part. Hills will play a part as well. Um, where do you think, knowing what you know and seeing what you've seen thus far this year, where do you think the race could be won or lost by any particular person? Well, well you're exactly right. The, the first time we came out of St. George's two years ago, um, I, was actually, I was doing the commentary again uh, that year, and... Uh, the whole pack was together over Blue Hole. The whole pack was together over Crawl Hill. Um, it really didn't break up until um, Flats Hill, but the reason for that was that it was a strong tailwind. This year, as you would have noticed, and I noticed on the way down here, the, the wind is a totally different direction. The direction this year is going to be a headwind, particularly on Kinleyfield Road, the causeway. So I think that you will see a different type of race uh, at the beginning. I think um, a lot of riders will be cautious, but for the brave at heart, sometimes uh, a headwind is a, if a, two or three riders can make a move in the headwind, that can be just as effective, if not more effective, than the anticipation of somebody attacking on a hill. And that's what everybody expects. They're waiting for Blue Hole, they're waiting for Crawl, they're waiting for Flats Hill, they're waiting for ZBM Hill. If you do something a little different, that might pay off for you today. I'm not saying it would. But, um, you know, hopefully people will take the opportunity to do something a little bit different. They're going to have to do something really uh, uh, special today to beat those two youngsters. But um, I honestly believe there's going to be a bit of a surprise today, but, um, despite all the talk that's been going around in cycling circles, in the media, in the public and everything. Well, let's see how it all pans out. Yep, it's going to be a great race regardless, and let's just hope that... Uh, everybody makes it down safely. It's it's a very um, it can be a very dangerous sport. There's a lot of guys who will be fighting to stay in contact with the race, and uh, sometimes things go wrong. Hopefully, it won't be today. They're ready. Darren Glassford on the front. With David Thomas, Mark Haverly, uh, Matthew Oliver is right there towards the front. And here we are on the neutral start. This is um, all the riders across the road positioning themselves, a few of them crossing themselves. I see Matthew Oliveira there. Uh, he realises the importance of this event just the same as everybody else, but especially as he is the defending winner from last year when we came out of Somerset. So we're going to go over the speed bump here. So we're just waiting. Everybody looks settled. Everybody's in their pedals. Uh, no early, early race incidents, which uh, sometimes can happen. Uh, spread across the road, Arthur Pitch is there on the front line, Chris um, Roke is on the front line there, I see Alan Mooney as well. 
And in about five minutes' time, uh, we'll pass it over to um, Peter Dunn because Peter Dunn uh, hopefully will get some coverage of what is anticipated to be an exciting women's race this year with the addition of riders like uh, Ashley Eswami, uh, Rosanna Hoy, more renowned for their running uh, prowess. But let me tell you, those two are very, very strong riders. They'll be up against Nicole Mitchell, Zanique Williams, and of course last year's winner, uh, Gabriella Arnold. So an intriguing women's race, which will set off in about five minutes' time. Uh, right now, everybody's just settling in. They have not been given the indication to race proper yet. We're still in the neutral stages. Um, there's about 60 riders there, which uh, on our winding roads is, is a big group of people. It is a dangerous sport. Let's go! Um, here we go. They've been given the signal to go, and uh, the first one to make some sort of move is Arthur Pitcher. And jumping on his wheel is Chris Roke. Uh, they've already opened up a, a small gap. I don't think this is a serious attack. Uh, the main contenders in this race will not be taking this too seriously. Uh, Arthur Pitcher is uh, already looking over his shoulder. He's opened up a gap of about uh, 10, 15 bike lengths. But the problem for Arthur is going to be that he will be facing very shortly when we get onto Kinley Field Road a pretty stiff headwind, which is, uh, as I said earlier, going to have a big effect on this race. So Arthur continuing to open the gap, uh, it's up to about 35 lengths now, the car is having to uh, pick up a lot of speed to stay ahead of him. We need to stay so that he's not getting any draft from uh, our car, any unfair advantage. Uh, there's no panic in the main pack, they're just uh, sitting there, relaxed, it is strung out a little bit, but it's not a big long straight line that would indicate that it's a serious chase. So let's go back to... Uh, Let's go back to Peter Dunn at the women's race and uh, their start. Thank you, Peter. Uh, yes, you're right. The women's race is going to be uh, a good event again this year. Arthur Pitcher is uh, just eased off the front. He didn't attack for so much off the front, uh, and he's now settled into a fairly smooth rhythm, but this is not a serious move in the big picture of things. Uh, the pack is just coming into sight. We're about to approach the bridge. Uh, Mark Hadley is on the front um, of the pack, just keeping this under control. They'll keep Arthur in sight. They know that it is not possible for him to make it uh, too far on his own. He's taking a look over his shoulder. He's not going to see anybody right now. That will probably, uh, in fact, I can see that uh, he's turned the intensity up a little bit. So, if anything, he's getting his moment of glory this morning uh, in the early stages of this race. Uh, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. came round the roundabout there and double dip uh, very quickly on the almost on the inside of the lead car. Uh, these riders uh, will be reaching today if they get into the uh, tailwind conditions of 60 plus kilometers an hour. And, um, but they won't be doing that on Kinley Field right now because you can see from the trees and the branches that Arthur is facing a very stiff headwind here. Uh, the pack is probably about uh, 100, 150 yards behind. Looks like one rider I can't identify trying to bridge across. Let's go back to Peter, see what's happening in the women's race. Okay, uh, we didn't pick Peter up that time, so we'll come back to the, to the men's race. A very big crowd here um, on the side of the road, adjacent to the airport. Um, 
The pack is spread across the road. There's no determined effort to chase down this brake right now. These guys understand that it's, uh, this is not going to affect the uh, overall outcome of the race. Um, Arthur's looking very smooth. He's been racing for a lot of years. He knows what he's doing. Um, this was obviously his race plan going in today that um, he would try something early. I'm sure that he was hoping that he wouldn't be alone. I'm sure that he was hoping that there would be maybe two or three other riders that would come with him to share the workload uh, to try and make this a, a break that would stick for a while. But we can already see that uh, the Tokyo team of riders are on the front now, about four riders strung out, pulling the rest of the pack. This will close up very shortly, I would imagine, uh, uh, maybe just uh, as we turn on to the causeway. Uh, let's see if we can go back and get Peter done. <laughs> Okay, well, Arthur's uh, looking behind. Is, uh, there's two riders actually coming across. Now, this might be something that would uh, could possibly work. I'm just trying to identify it. It's two uh, Tokyo riders who are uh, closing the gap on Arthur. He'll actually will wait for those two riders so that uh, three is better than one. They will share the uh, workload in the headwind, uh, uh, maybe uh, make this move stick a little better. Uh, I'm trying to identify who that is right now. It's. Um, is that Yes, the first one's looks. It looks like that's um, Adam Hopkin on the front with, uh, I think it's Alan Mooney and Arthur Pitcher. So now we have three, three riders. Now the pack will start to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on because they do not want three riders to make too much of a gap on the rest of the field. It's very manageable right now. We, we haven't even got onto the causeway. You can see the effort that these three are having to put on uh, to uh, maintain their lead over the pack because it is a strong headwind. Um, I see uh, now that the pace seems to have eased in the pack. I think that where we will start to see the action is once we get to Blue Hole Hill and then... You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. Okay, we're having to uh, accelerate away here as those three riders came round the roundabout at the airport three, three miles into this race. Uh, let's go back to Peter Dunn uh, and see if we can pick you up, Peter. Uh, at the station, if we could go back to uh, go to a short commercial break and try and get contact with Peter Dunn and uh, pick up the women's race. Let me know, tap me when, tap me on the back when we're ready. Back at the uh, lead of the race here, these three riders.
Well, we're just coming past Swizzle in, and these three riders, you could see when they came across the causeway, the strong headwind was having a tremendous effect on them. Arthur Pitch is on the front again. They are trying to switch the lead to work together to uh, keep this gap open, but the pack really has not turned a pedal in anger yet. They still spread across the road when we were coming up Blue Hole Hill. So there's no significant move from the main field at this point. Uh, these two are these three are continuing on. It's a good move. It's worth a try. We've seen it in the past. We saw it many years, many years ago, when Jet Payne uh, and another rider uh, um, eased off the front of Somerset Bridge, coming out of Somerset, and the pack never came back. Nobody took responsibility to chase them down. I don't think that same mistake will be made today. But right now. Three riders are making the most of, uh, of a good move, and the gap on the downhill after Swizzle has opened up considerably. They have, the pack is not even coming to sight yet. Uh, there's a, obviously a huge tactical battle going on here within the group. They'll be looking at each other to see who is going to uh, try and pull this break back because whoever does do all the work to pull them back will obviously pay for that further down the line. Um, going to be people that are, will be contenders for this race because they're going to have to work so hard to close this race down. Uh, the three of them are, are talking to each other, they're working well together. We're just coming down by Baylor's Bay and still the pack is hard, not in sight as we came around the corner. We're just starting to go up uh, the backside of Paul Hill. Uh, you can see the, uh, the effort is starting to take its toll. Uh, looks like Hopkins might be struggling on the upgrade now. It may come down to two riders. He's looking behind. Uh, they're actually not working in unison quite so much now. Uh, the three of them uh, are not in close formation. They're not making the uh, full advantage of the draft from each other. I have to believe that this race, by the time we get down towards uh, Shelley Bay, will certainly have come back together and we will see the major uh, moves in this race. Let's go back to Peter Dunn. Let's see what's going on in the women's race. Peter? Okay, I will be given an indication as soon as uh, Peter comes back online. Uh, we are doing our best with the communications to give you coverage of uh, both the men's and the women's races. Uh, they both, of course, are just as important as each other and uh, potentially as exciting. Thank you, Peter. Um, back at the race, we just crested uh, Cool Hill. The pack is just behind these three riders. This, uh, uh, their effort is finished. Uh, it was a brave effort, it was a good effort, but uh, it was really doomed to, uh, not failure, but doomed, doomed to uh, not working because there's too many strong, strong riders in this main pack who are not going to let three riders just go away from them. It looks like uh, Adam Kirk is leading the charge. Uh, the riders are starting to string out as we come down Crawl Hill. 
You see these riders adopting the most aerodynamic position. They're off the seats, sitting on the top tube of the bikes, trying to get as, as much of an aerodynamic benefit they can uh, because the wind is still blowing strongly. It's more of a crosswind now, but it is a very significant wind, as we can see from the flags as we come down by the marketplace, uh, approaching now, coming towards the area of Shelley Bay Strait. They're leaving these two, three riders still on the front, so now they've kept collected them up. Now they've uh, closed down the gap. The pack is actually uh, relaxing. There's no moves, there's no counter-attacks at this point. I think that uh, the next time that we will see something really significant is when we get to Flats Hill, which is where two years ago uh, the race uh, absolutely blew apart when Mark Atherley uh, set the pace off at the uh, bottom of the hill. By the time he got to the top, the race was completely decimated. Now we see one rider going off the front. It is Anthony Bartley. Anthony is a very, very strong, powerful rider. He will be cherishing these uh, conditions. He's absolutely drilling it off the front right now as he's looking over his shoulder to see if anybody's come with him. And they haven't, so he may as well just go. He will be working for this team now, the Winner's Edge team. He will be making everybody else chase him. Um, and right now he's opened up a really big gap as we go past the 24-hour fitness. No reaction from the pack at this point. So we have a solo attack for Anthony Bartley. Uh, Peter, what's going on with the women? Okay, so uh, once Peter gets cuts in, then uh, we'll go back to him. But right now, Anthony Bartley's opened up a lead, probably uh, 50. Five meters. The race is completely across the road. They're actually going from one side of the road to the other. Nobody is taking up the chase. Uh, this could be a good opportunity for Anthony to uh, to sustain this this lead for quite some time before they have to really going to have to work to pull him back. You cannot afford to let a super strong rider like Bartley off the front. He's got his head down, he's down on the drops, he's trying to get as aero as he possibly can. There's still no chase from what I can see in the distance down the road. We're just making the uh, small rise before we get to uh, the railway museum. He's out of the saddle, he's obviously feeling the effects. You can see from his face that he's now putting in 100% effort into this break now. He's got nothing to lose. When I've got a tour. I know, but I'm just saying I just think you can. Okay. Seven mile mark. Okay, back on to the lead of the men's race and Anthony Bartley has opened up a huge lead over the pack. We cannot see them in sight at all as we approach the aquarium. This is a do or die effort. He's got no choice now but to put his head down and try to keep this lead for as long as he possibly can. As we come to the aquarium and we look down the road, there is not one rider in sight. This is a huge advantage that he's got over the this is uh, far more significant than I would expect anybody to have got at this stage of the race. He needs to control his effort now as he goes over Flats Hill. Uh, he's not his strongest climber in the field by any means. He knows that. He's not going to dig so deep that he blows up. And I can see already he's adopted a really nice, smooth cadence. Getting out of the saddle to stretch his leg, then sit down again, then out of the saddle again. But still, nobody in sight, and we're already uh, a third of the way on Flats Hill. And this is where the significant move was made last, uh, last time we came out of Somerset, uh, and the race exploded. It doesn't look at this point that uh, anybody's going to take it on um, until probably towards the top of this hill. Anthony's really suffering now. He's going through so much pain, but his mind is telling his legs, forget the pain, let me keep pushing. He's got a huge lead. 
the, the fact that he's looked over, he can't even see anybody when we're going past Whitney Institute. This is a big surprise in this race. Uh, none of us, I don't think, would have anticipated that this would happen today. We expected it to be a super fast race from the start. Looking back down in the distance now, I can see that the field has started to react. By the time we get to the top, we're probably going to see a lot of riders shelled from this group. And in fact, here they come, and it's right on the front uh, at the moment. It's Caden Hopkins. It's He's closed this gap so, so quickly, uh, they weren't in sight at the bottom of the hill. And now Hopkins, as we come to Whitney Institute, is not only catching Bartley, he's gone past him. And uh, quickly chasing him, about 10, 15 bike lengths behind right now, is Matthew Oliveira. This is more what we anticipated could happen. Hopkins, a clear lead of about 15 bike lengths. He knows that Matthew Oliveira is super strong. He was the winner last year. These two have been battling out all year long. They know each other. Hopkins has put his head down. Oliveira is getting as aero as possible. This race looks now like it could be just between these two. Um, Oliveira is working so, so hard to catch. Uh, still maintaining the same gap. Hopkins looks over his shoulder, shakes his head. I think he wants Oliveira to come across to him. Two racing against the pack is better than one. But Oliveira is not closing the gap. Whether is that's by choice, whether he can't, uh, remains to be seen. But right now, these two have a clear lead over the field. We're now starting the downside of the hill, down towards the squash club. Nobody else in sight, just these two riders, these two junior sensations. Peter Dern, this is very exciting, but we must go back to you, then we'll come back to the lead. That's when they'll make the decision of who's going to win this race. It won't be a decision by uh, by choice. They will both fight tooth and nail to take this victory today, assuming they can stay away. You can see the pace has already eased, and they're very, very smooth. Their cadence is pedal stroke for pedal stroke. We've just gone past um, Wattington Road East on the steeper section just towards T Street. And as we look back down the road, there is nobody in sight as Hopkins takes the lead now, uh, keeping in a very smooth effort out of the saddle to stretch his legs. Uh, his head a little bit to the side. I think I know this kid quite well and that is normally an indication that uh, he's definitely feeling the pressure. That's understandable. He closed the gap uh, up on uh, Bartley when we were on Flats Hill. He maintained the lead and now he's got uh, his teammate uh, Matthew Oliveira there with him. Uh, these two are uh, looking very, very strong now. Uh, they're 
both in preparation to go away to the Ireland Games uh, next month where they will be riding in support of uh, Dominic Mayo at the Ireland Games. So they've got a lot on their plate this year as we come up towards T Street side by side. Peter Dunn, over to you. A huge, a huge crowd at T Street watching these two riders, um, very, very smooth, fully under control. Uh, they know now that this race is going to be between the two of them. Uh, it's going to be uh, down to uh, tactics, I think. I don't actually see any chance of uh, this, uh, anybody breaking away. I think that they will both accept it right now that they need to just keep together, work together and then sort this out in Hamilton. We're up by ZBM, we look back down as far as T Street, there is no other rider in sight. These two have opened up a huge lead over the rest of the chasing field. And let me tell you, that field who have just come into sight will be working uh, because they still will not give up hope until the final phase. Passing over by uh, ZBM, Oliveira on the front, Hopkins uh, sitting in his draft there, head tilted a little bit to the side, but he's taking his pulls. These two are sharing the lead, they're sharing the load. Uh, they're not going to ease off until they know that they have this race in hand and that's going to be somewhere uh, down in Hamilton. Uh, let's go back and let's see if we can get Peter. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. Uh, here we do obviously want to hear what's going on. If we need Peter come back on the air, then we will go back to him. Hopkins on the front. They just passed um, Montpelier Road, so they're now on the down stretch. They're looking at 65 kilometers an hour. These two are flying down here. Uh, Hopkins on the front. Hands just hanging over the front of his handlebars. Oliveira pulling through, and he pulled through very, very strongly right there. That could be an indication of how he's feeling. He didn't just ease through. Testing Hopkins out to see uh, how he would react to uh, a, a, a strong surge there. Uh, and Hopkins is there right on his wheel. This is just neck and neck. This is a, a battle of the two top riders presently in Bermuda, who, when they join up with uh, Dominic Mayo later next month, will certainly, certainly have a strong uh, team going through to the Ireland game. They have the Junior Commonwealth Games. Then they will go to the Caribbean Championships in Puerto Rico. These guys are the future. They are the uh, cycling in Bermuda right now. To uh, slow right down. He's going to take his first May 24th Sinclair Packard Memorial Road Race 
in good fashion today. What an amazing night by these two riders. That's my boy, Peter Dunn. Go back to you, Peter Dunn.